guys out here flipping the Maxent Chigger Craw on the Great Lakes in crystal clear water. You guys stay tuned. There's one. First one. Get over here. Oh, look at him with it. That did not take long. Fatty. All right, guys. We're out here. Let's just call it a very public body of water. And we just got here. And we're throwing a Maxent Chigger Cross, the new one. And that's our first bite in like five minutes of fishing or less. Oh, oh my bad. Sorry, Corey. <laughs> no picture for that one. <laughs> keep rolling. Dude. Go, keep going. It's, it's gonna be okay, trust me. <laughs> there will be more. <laughs> All right, guys, so you can tell just by looking at these reeds today, it's windy out here. And we, like I said, we're on a public body of water. I'm not gonna say which one just to protect it from it getting pounded because these guys that do live here locally, you know, I don't, I, I want to respect that. But uh, let's just say it's a great lake. It is part of the Great Lakes, very, very public body of water. And we were going to go smallmouth fishing, but as you can see, the, that wind, I got one. Oh, he spit it. Um, that wind is just, it's too brutal today. Corey's back's all jacked up, you know. So we got to go largemouth fishing per the boss. And that's not a bad thing. So we picked up a chigger craw, caught one right off the bat on the new Max Scent chigger craw. We're gonna go down, try and hide from the wind, uh, go down a lot of these tule lines, reed lines, cattail lines, whatever you want to call them, and uh, see what happens. We're gonna throw a little chopo on them too and some of this calm stuff. I think that's a pike. Sure is. Corey, you want to grab this thing and get it off? <laughs> Just gonna let him tire out for a minute. Something I don't really feel like grabbing right now with treble hooks all up in it. bit somewhere through there. So you can see the angle of the sun, there's a nice little shade line. No, that one cloud's over it right now, but there's a nice little shade line down through here. It's windy, man, it's windy. There's nowhere else for them to be offshore. There's no grass, nothing out there. So they've gotta be somewhere down this bank line. We're still power pole down right now. But we fished all of this behind us, and we'll show you that in a second. And again, we get out here to a point, a main point, just like where we had those first couple bites, and we get bit. So we haven't ran into the big group of fish yet, but I'm, I'm very confident that if you keep doing this, you just keep flipping, keep flipping, keep moving all day, you're eventually gonna get in a section where you're gonna catch several uh, largemouth. Because hey, it is turning into fall. It's the fall transition. These fish are starting to, really school up, feed up. They know that winter is getting not that far around the corner and that it's coming fairly soon. So we're gonna keep moving. We're gonna move around this point. This kind of just makes a big, nice point. And we're not gonna waste our time going back in this stuff anymore. I think we're gonna stay on the edges. Pike, or what is that? No, mudfish. <laughs> All 
right guys so this chager craw whether you're throwing the regular power bait or the max scent of course i prefer max scent but uh, it can be rigged several different ways of course we're just texas rigging it here uh, it works great on the back of a swim jig or a flipping jig that mudfish messed up that last one we're rigged up with a new one action looks good we're ready to go god dang it there's one right here i'm not even gonna fix my bait because he's Look at that. All right, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna fill you in right there. Jeez, that's a good fish. All right, so I hope you guys saw that. I hope Corey was filming. That is why you don't even look at that fusion hook just freaking through the dome. All right, so if you guys are paying attention, my bait I threw in there two times. I missed the fish both times. My bait was messed up on the hook but I was so close boat wise to where this fish was and that fish was hot. After the second time throwing it in there, missing them again, um, I didn't even worry about fixing the bait. That would have taken time away and that fish might've swam off and that next flip might've been two feet the opposite way of him. So don't worry if you got one that's active on your bait, don't worry about fixing it perfectly. Get right back in there. Even if your bait's a little messed up and you can still catch that fish. Didn't even need to set the hook on it. He took off in there. I was gonna say, look at all these weird black spots on him. They're like, I thought the flake of the... Is that actually in him, in him? It's skin? Yeah. Whoa, I've never seen that before. Me either. It's not on him, that's in his skin. I know. Honestly, guys, it, I'm pretty excited about being able to have max scent in a bait like the chigger crawl because the action on the bait is really good and it's got all the scent that max scent has in it so you get the benefits of the action benefits of the scent and i believe i'm a firm believer now that as bass fishing is getting more popular more and more people on the water scent is a bigger and bigger deal oh lost a little one right there uh, but the scent is a bigger and bigger deal than it used to be. So, yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is my first time using it. It just came out this summer, and I'm really liking it. I'm loving the action that I'm seeing out of the bait, and I know, oh, there he is. I know that I've got scent. So they've been eating it good, minus that little one I just missed, but these fish are... We're getting a really good hook in them too. You can see that's that Fusion 19 4 aught straight shank hook, flipping hook. That's the one I recommend to use with this. But, I don't know, nice little fish right there. We've probably caught 10 or 12, something like that now, not bad. So flipping isn't really, to me, you know, I I would say the spring, you know, thinking about the whole country, the spring is the best time to flip. Uh, but a lot of times flipping is based off of the conditions. And, you know, whatever body of water you're on, is there a cover shallow in the water? And what's the water level, you know? Or is there enough water in that cover uh, for largemouth to be up in there? And if there is, Springtime is probably going to be the best, but you're going to be able to catch them, you know, flipping and pitching around that cover probably all year long, to be honest, except maybe the winter time. That's when I would say, you know, is the worst season to flip, but you can, you can certainly flip and pitch shallow cover three out of the four seasons all around the country. And just let the, just let the actual 
conditions and cover and everything dictate that for you. Just like today, we don't really have, there's not other options. You know, we have to get in here and flip and it's really the only place they can be. Little guy. Ooh, looks like something tried to eat him. Maybe. Well, we're trying to get out of the out of the wind, and there's just not much that's really legitimately protected. So this looks decent. We're gonna fish through here. We might have to put it on the trailer though and go relaunch somewhere else. It's gonna be too windy getting around. There's a good one. Dude. Yeah, that's a fat one right there. Got right back in here. Hold on, I got spotlight going. I got poles down. There we go. Another nice one on the old Maxent Chigger Craw. So we got back out here. The water's low on the Great Lakes this year. And we just got out here, back out to this outside edge where we've caught a couple already. And they're definitely out here. All right, so I'm using this 4 aught like I mentioned, uh, Fusion 19 flip, straight shank flipping hook. It's got a nice wire keeper to hold the bait up, and it's super, super sharp hook. Um, and just fits this bait really, really well. So. I like that with a half ounce uh, tungsten weight, and then we're doing 40 pound X9 braid, Berkeley X9 braid. And that's it, really simple. As far as rod goes, it's a 7.6 heavy. Uh, this is the older Fantasista Premier. There's a new model now. And then if you're not flipping with a Revo Rocket, I don't even know if you're really flipping and pitching, because this reel is the bomb. You can pick line up so quick, just like that. I mean, a long flip, long pitch. Get it in there, get a couple shakes in, nothing there. Burn it back, it's a 10 to one gear ratio. I just really, really believe you can cover a lot more water with this thing, so. If I'm flipping, this is the reel I'm using. Guys, we just made a move. Get over here to this cleaner water, or calmer water, not, it is cleaner, calmer too. I've been feeling the bottom. We're getting out here closer to the main lake and it's definitely getting uh, more rocky. So, I don't know, I don't, I don't think the largemouth wanna be around the rocks as much as they do the sand. Uh, it's the right cover. You know, there's shade and everything for them, a nice line, but I just don't know if they wanna be around this stuff. But we're gonna find out. We're gonna go down this line. We got a little ways to go and just keep pitching around. The hard part about today is that everything uh, th that is on the outside edge is really exposed to this wind. Even where we're trying to get protected, you know, there's just not enough of it to really be protected. So that's definitely making it tougher today and that's just part of fishing the Great Lakes. You're always gonna be a little more exposed on the Great Lakes. I'll tell you guys again, I'm fishing this 7.6 seven, uh, seven, Fantasista Premier Rod, and there's a new model out now. I can't wait to get them. I really, really like them. But if you're going to spend, if you want to spend some money on a rod, there's a couple areas I recommend doing it. One is a flipping stick. One is some type of football, Texas rig rod, and then on your spinning rods, because those are all baits uh, that you're gonna be working and feeling the bottom with those techniques that you're doing and flipping, you know, just being a seven, six heavy rod, it's just, it's just gonna be heavier than a seven foot medium or medium heavy no matter what. So it's really nice to have a light but super strong rod when you're flipping 
and, uh, and also in those other areas as well. I would recommend spending a little more money on a rod. But I'm using 40 pound X9 braid here. I love X9 braid on my bait casters. It's just super, super smooth. It's a nine carrier braid. And it's it's been out like three years now and honestly, phenomenal, phenomenal braid. So that's all I use on my bait casters now. And then on my spinning rods, uh, I do use the X5. I like the, a little more rough braid uh, for my spinning rods or spinning reels. I just like the way it feels better. And the other thing is too, is that really light thin line uh, if you just have a real smooth high carrier count there's more threads in there so it tends to pull apart you know if you're if it's in the winter and your fingers are cut up a little bit and you're sitting there tying your knots any little cut on your hand or anything uh, will pull those eight and nine carrier braids apart on that light line so five carrier on spinning six pound line is what I use uh, and then X9 on bait cast is all you need. Simple. All right, guys, so I want to show you real quick. We, we were back in here. That's where we caught some of these other fish. Uh, but you can see this is all really, really shallow back in there. And because of that, with the low water, there's just not much cover. We fished all of that and it wasn't that great for us. So the first thing I, you know, those are places I've caught them before, uh, but now with the conditions obviously different in the lower water, I pulled the graph up and I'm looking for uh, deeper water here. And you can just see right through here, these lines get a lot tighter. And that's where it looks like these fish have moved out to. I've caught three and about less than 10 minutes of fishing now and we still have a lot more of this steeper hard line to go down. So we're gonna keep going down it, uh, but they are out here certainly because there's deeper water close by. There's more water uh, further back in this cover, just a better place for them to live right now. guys we just uh got two bites in a row pretty quick out here on this outside edge that we said we were going to go down so here's the deal out here right now we're going to let this guy go real quick uh and the reason we're flipping it's late summer transitioning into fall uh but these fish don't have anything else further out to go to really there's not grass out there deeper there might be a few rock piles or something but the mapping up here where we're at is not very good uh, so they'd be really really hard to find that would be the only other option i would say you would have uh, but because the water is low and pretty much their only cover is up here on the bank they're going to be on that outside stuff uh, it's, it's no different than like a low tide on a tidal body of water or an inland lake um, you know that the water's down they're going to be on the outside edge if you're flipping and here they, they just have nowhere else to go. So flipping stick is really the number one thing I would have here right now to pick up if I had a choice of anything at all. And, and I do, and that's what we're doing. Um, but you know, it, I, I don't think time of year or even like, I think it's the way that the lake is set up with the low water, clear, good cover on the bank. Uh, that's that's the reason why the flipping bites on you know if it was higher water uh and these fish could move further back up in these areas and we could get out of the wind and more protected areas then top water and other things like that would come into play but right now i just don't see that happening nice one Nice one, guys. We have figured them out finally. Didn't take all that long. Look at that hook again. That's just nasty. That's not even right. And you hook them good on that. And you hook them good a lot. 
There you go. All right, guys, we're gonna end it on this guy right there. Honestly, not a bad day. We probably ended up with maybe around 15 pounds for our best five. That's a chunky three, probably a heavy three pounder. They're just, they're fat, they weigh a lot. I watched them come in and smoke it as soon as I put it in there. So again, the lesson today, low water, get on the outside edge, closest to the deepest water as possible, and out of the wind too. You're not gonna catch them flipping if you're flipping in the wind. Did you get the slow-mo? <laughs> See you guys later. Hey, make sure uh, to leave a comment below. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment. I'll personally get on there once this video's up and uh, answer your guys' questions if Corey will let me know. And then you guys make sure to si sign up for the giveaway too. It's an Abu Garcia Berkeley giveaway. These might be involved, maybe some of our new sw uh, jigs, swim jigs, flipping jigs, all that stuff. So we got a little bit of bank here left to flip and we're gonna call it a day. We'll see you guys later. <laughs>